Welcome to TechCraft Inc. I'm your host Slav Shakya, bringing you a new series Behind the Code with TechCraft, where we break down key concepts in programming language with our in-house experts. So without further delay, let's get right into the topic of today's video. What is synchronous and asynchronous programming? When you're busy on the PC, using software or simply browsing the web, there's essentially two ways the server fulfills your request. In computer language, these are known as synchronous and asynchronous programming. The terms synchronous and asynchronous inherently give a clue to what each programming model does, but there's definitely more to it. So let's take a deep dive with Subhas Adhikari on how these models can be understood better in terms of computer programming. Asynchronous programming is a programming pattern that enables developers to write, write code so that multiple lines of code can be executed parallelly or executed at once. So the main difference between asynchronous programming and synchronous programming is how the program flows. In synchronous programming, what happens is the program's flow is always from top to down, bottom. So let's say there are three lines of code, one, two, and three. It's always that line number one completes, then line number two, and then line number three. But in synchronous asynchronous programming, what happens is, let's say there's line number one, two, and three, four, five. So what we can say is that line number one executes, to executes and in line number three we are doing some asynchronous tasks then what program flow does is that line number three is delegated to an external thread or to other some other process then it executes in the background so line number four does not necessarily wait for line number three to complete and the program flows if the line number three is completed in between it simply calls back to the menu thread and says that look i'm complete i need to do some 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 other task so this is how program flows in asynchronous programming. So for example, uh, giving an example of a real life um, scenario, let's say we have a clock in a bank where three, there are three customers, customer A, B, and C. So the first customer, customer A comes to the clock and says, I need to meet the CEO. And um, so the clock takes the, the person E to the CEO's office and they talk for their like 30 minutes, let's say. In this case, there's person B and C waiting 30 minutes outside the clock's office for that event to complete, for the meeting to complete. That way, they have to wait 30 minutes each. And the clock returns along with the person A and says goodbye, whatever. And then the person B is given a chance to do his work inside the, inside the bank. Let's say it takes him five minutes to do that tax. The waiting time for person C is 35 minutes. And that's not ideal. If you're waiting, if you're a person C, you want to wait 35 minutes for the clock to give you a chance to speak to him, right? So let's say the clock got smarter and he's working asynchronously. So in that process, what happens is the person C will not have to wait as long. So let's see how. So person A is taken to the CEO's office. What the clock says to person A is that you do your thing, you talk with the CEO and call me if I have any problems. He returns back comes to person B, says that, okay, you do your task, whatever it is, do it, and call me back if you have any problem. So B, B will be directed where he wants to go, and then the person C will get a chance almost immediately. So wait time, if you see in the first scenario, the synchronous scenario is 35 minutes, but if you see in the asynchronous programming scenario, it's almost instant, let's like two minutes. So you can see a difference here, right? So these are the scenarios you can use synchronous and asynchronous programming. So from the above example, we saw that asynchronous programming is superior, but should you always be using it? Probably not. There are scenarios, let's say, where there are some basic computational tasks being done. So in those scenarios, asynchronous programming is not always the fastest. You can simply run the code synchronously. Let's say you are writing a program where you need to, execute, you need to add two or three numbers or do a very simple computational task. In those scenarios, it is not necessary to write it asynchronously because it does not make sense. It, it does not have any performance impacts from the synchronous side. So this is the main part you have to know before writing the code asynchronously. Now, moving on, if you are writing the code asynchronously and you know it needs to be written asynchronously, you have to make sure that the program flows very correctly. So you write a code where it says, uh, do some tasks. Let's say it says that fetch API, fetch data from database, and it comes back to you, right? So you have to make sure 
that the data is available before you are trying to get that data and use it somewhere. So let's go back to a, a real life scenario. So you, the user logs into your web portal. He tries to look for some data in a table. So he just hit um, the user hits get button, let's say. And you are trying, you, what you are doing is you are calling a database. It, it takes like 30 milliseconds to get that data. And you are doing the tax synchronously. So if you are doing the track synchronously, again, the wait time is there. The user will see a loading button for 30 seconds, 30 milliseconds. So that might not be an ideal scenario for you. If that takes long, the user will have to wait a long time. So what you do is that you place that API call in an asynchronous thread. Doing that, what you'll do is that you'll see, okay, you'll not, user will not see that loading button. Instead, we'll just load the data lazily or, or you, you, process, you simply do that task asynchronously. But in the next step, you have, if you are trying to access the same data without the data being loaded, then you'll see that you'll face a problem because there's nothing to be that, that has been um, got from the database yet. So you'll have to make sure that you have the data or the asynchronous tasks are finished before you are trying to get the result of the asynchronous task. So you have to be very careful while doing that. Programs like, um, let's say, uh, tools like JavaScript or the programming languages like JavaScript, what they do is they provide you with a callback function that will let you do task after the asynchronous task has been completed. So you can make use of that or you can use promises. You can even use async and await, which is a very important concept nowadays in JavaScript if you are trying to move on with uh, writing code in JavaScript. So you have to make sure that you cover these basics before writing code in JavaScript or um, writing code asynchronously. So now, when should you use asynchronous um, programming and when should you use synchronous programming? So if you are using, if you are doing computational tasks, simple computational tasks, basic tasks, or you are sharing resources between multiple uh, multiple threads, you should be doing those tasks synchronously. So let's see example. I'm using this cup. So there are three processes that you are that are using this cup. And in each process, what we are doing is we are testing if the cup is full. If we let every user fill this cup synchronously, what happens asynchronously, what happens is that this will fill in, this will fill in, this will fill in, and there's an instance where the cup might spill because the drink is just full. So that way you are you are not checking the condition for everything at the same time. What you need to do is that you can do it synchronously. So first pours and the second pours and the th then the third pours. That way you you will always make sure that the drink is not spilled. So if you are doing some resource sharing task, you should do it synchronously. If you are doing some task that is very simple and does not provide any uh, performance gains from asynchronous programming, you, should, you can do it synchronously. So if you are doing things like UI update in Android phone or, in, uh, or a UI, a UI update on phone, what you have to do is that you have to do, do those tasks synchronously because there is only one main UI thread. So those tasks in Android and iOS programming must be done synchronously. Moving to the asynchronous side of things, if you are getting data from an external source, let's say a database from any other API, you can do those calls asynchronously so that uh, the user can, you, you can simply lo lazy load those data and the user will not have to forever see a loading button. So let's say we, where we can see this example is in Google Drive. If you are try trying to upload, let's say, a video that is one hour long, it will simply do those tasks in background where you simply drag and drop the video in the Google Drive and the task is delegated in a small window. It just minimizes it. And then you can browse your files, you can see your files, you can do everything in Google Drive. Your task is not blocked. So in these scenarios, we can use asynchronous programming, asynchronous uh, time programming to help users get out tasks faster. We hope today's video helped you understand the concept of synchronous and asynchronous programming. If you find our content useful, do give it a like and feel free to share the video. Also, do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more by clicking the bell icon. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back soon with another video.